Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about the subgrade reaction. How to calculate subgrade reactions and how we can apply it when you design the shallow foundations. Especially when you design shallow foundation using a computer software. This method is very important because now when you do the design manually, we consider the rigid method and you don't want to find subgrade reaction. But when you do the analysis with the software or when you do a flexible foundations analysis, then such situations you need to have an element or subgrade reaction to represent the soil. This subgrade reaction basically represents the soil, soil behavior. So there are a lot to discuss. Um, request you all to watch this video till the end. This will be interesting presentation. Right, let's start. You know, shallow foundations can be designed very easily with the manual methods. Right. When you have a coating like this, if you have a column load N, so if you know the allowable by a bearing capacity, so you can easily calculate the area of the coating. Right. You know stress is force divided by area. So stress is allowable bearing capacity. This is column axial load. So this is the area of the foundation. Since this allowable bearing capacity and force is known, you can easily calculate the putting area. When it comes to software, you can't do that because allowable bearing capacity now it's here, right? So the soil is there. Here soil you have a soil. But when you model it, you have to model this soil. Right? How do you model the soil? How do you model the soil? That's the important thing that we have to discuss here. So we model the soil using springs. We use springs to model the soil. So without uh, some element, we can't represent the soil in the computer. So therefore we use strings. So this spring is represented by the subgrade reaction in the computer model. So we have to have subgrade reactions. Now when it comes to subgrade reactions, it may be linear, it may be area. For line element, you need the, you need the linear subgrade reactions. For foundations like this, for this one, this is a area. Okay, you represent the area, you present the line here, right? So therefore, you need to have a, now when you repress, when you modeling a footing like this, or rough foundations, you have to have a area spring, or subject reactions for this particular area. It's now it, I think, clear to you what is the subject reactions, and how it is using in the analysis and design, okay? In a raw foundation, so anything you can model using subgrade reactions. It is basically used to represent the soil in the model. Right now, how do you calculate the subgrade reaction? Subgrade reaction is whole case. How do you calculate this? There are many methods that we can adapt to calculate this one. A lot of empirical equations are there. In addition to that, you can do the testing and find subgrade reactions. Out of all those methods, there are, I mean, there are simple methods as well. Now, today we are going to discuss the simple methods specified in the Bowles Foundation group. Because now, when it comes to the empirical method, there are some of them are very complicated, some of the very simple, but uh, when it comes to testing, we have to do the actual test and we have to find it. So, all those methods bring you troubles. The method we are going to discuss today make your life very comfortable. So you can calculate very easily. If you know the so foundation allowable bearing capacity, you can calculate the subgrade reaction very easily. Let's now see what is the method we use to calculate the subgrade reaction. Right? So if you calculate the subgrade reaction, then you can input it into the computer model. So, in the computer model, there is a place to insert the subgrade reaction or area spring. So, you can just do it straight away once you calculate it. 
you can enter this value in the computer model. So that's it. So with that, computer will automatically calculate the soil as a spring. Will then you it will give you the result, right? Now let's we look into the this equation, right? This equation is forty times factor of safety and bearing capacity. This is the equation. Let's discuss about this equation a little deeper. So you have a factor of safety and the bearing capacity, right? You uh, when you're doing the analysis, you are doing for it for the ultimate limit. So when you calculate the bearing capacity, we ca we have allowable bearing capacity, right? When you, for the designs, we get the allowable bearing capacity. So what how it's get take? You take the ultimate bearing capacity divided by the factor of safety. From that, you get the allowable bearing capacity. Right now you have allowable carrying capacity here. You need to have a ultimate bearing capacity when you do for the ultimate limit state designs. So how do you calculate it? Now Q U equals Q allowable into F4 as factor of safety. Right? So you can see this part is here, right? This segment is factor of safety in the bearing capacity. There is actually the BC means allowable bearing capacity. So this segment is coming from here. So we need to have ultimate bearing capacity. It's come with this. So you have, if you have the ultimate allowable bearing capacity, it has to be multiplied by the same factor of safety you use to calculate the allowable bearing capacity. Usually this factor of safety in the range of 3 to 4, right? Sometimes it's considered as a 2. So, this is the typical range that we could be consider in evaluating the allowable bearing capacity. What you can do is we can consider a certain value as the allowable bearing capacity, or if you know the allowable bearing capacity, consider it. Or if you know the factor of safety, consider it to calculate the allowable bearing capacity, you can use it here. If you don't know that, you may use figure like 3, this kind of average value. So you may use 3 as the factor of safety. Here you put the allowable bearing capacity. So now this part is over. Right, next, next what's this 40? How it comes? Now this 40 comes with the allowable bearing capacity calculation. That is, there is a connection. Now when you calculate the allowable bearing capacity, allowable usually we consider it for 25 millimeter settlement right so we consider the allowable bearing capacity for 25 millimeter settlement so now let's see how this 40 come now you know the equation basic equation force is equal k into x right this is Force required for unit displacement is called spring constant. This is our spring constant, right? K. So this equation is very familiar to you. This is force equals to spring constant into displacement. As we discuss uh, that here in this uh, allowable bearing capacity calculation, we do allowable limit of 25 millimeter so let's see how it comes now we have to consider uh, now for unit for unit deflection what would be the spring constant what is the spring constant for unit displacement I'm telling because this 40 is straight away there but we might we should know what to do when we design for higher deflection or higher allowable settlement right let's see in your bearing capacity your bearing capacity is given for 50 millimeter so can you use this 40 there right no you can't so you have to modify this equation therefore we have to know how this 40 came okay let's come to this equation again now you you know the spring constant we have to calculate for unit displacement 
let's say our k is equal force divided by displacement. Bearing capacity is calculated for 25 mm. So for our unit displacement, the, our settlement will be 25 mm. For unit force, our settlement will be 25 mm. That's it. Okay. So we need to convert this into the meters. Now, how we can do it? We can divide this 25 by 1000. Right. This becomes 1000 divided by 25, that is 40. So now it's clear to you how this 40 came to this equation. Okay. So the, your bearing capacity you calculate for 25 millimeter, that is for unit force unit force unit force we calculate the bearing capacity allowing a 25 millimeter settlement right then for, then we convert this unit into 40 right now i think it's it's clear to you how we come up with this equation 40 into bearing capacity into factor safety that's how we find the subgrade reaction now what if the settlement specified with the bearing capacity is 50 mm? Can you use this equation in the modeling? No, you can't. In such a situations, you have to use or you have to modify this equation. How we can modify this equation? Right. K is equal. Now you can't use 40. Instead of you instead of 40, now we have to change now. I'm not going to write all those stuff here. So if you can see here, this is what the final result. So this I can get this from here. Say our deflection is 50 millimeters. So in that case we have to consider this instead of 40. So then factor of safety into allowable bearing capacity. Right. So you can see our new equation will not be the same right so this is 2 here it will become 20 20 factor of safety into bearing capacity this is the our new equation you can see okay therefore we have to be very careful when you are using these softwares in the computer modeling when you modulate you can simply use the bowels equation as bowels foundational design looks with given this equation so this is approximation this also approximation so something same as the other equations but if you do it testing you might get the more exact answer but you can rely on this with certain modification as with this cars uh, when you need a modification if you don't need a modification, you don't want to do that list to the modifi modify this equation. But if your settlement is below the 25 millimeter for your bear capacity specified, allowable bearing capacity specified, so you can use this equation 14 to bearing capacity in terms of safety. But if there is higher settlement specified with the bearing capacity, in such situations you have to modify this equation and use it. In the modeling, so now you know how to calculate the spin constant case. So if you if you know this spin constant, when you model the foundation with the software, when you model the raw foundation, you need to have area spring. So area spring that area spring can be calculated from this equation, and this you can straight away put into the computer model. You can assign it to the computer model, and and then you can do the designs very easily for the flexible method so if you're doing the designs for the flexible method analysis for the flexible method we have to use this kind of a spring constant to model the foundation rigid method of course you don't want you just get the bearing capacity you can plot the area and you can proceed with the rest of the design calculation but when you do the flexible foundations it's not the case so you have to consider the variation in the soil pressure not like rigid method so where the forces are high the soil pressure will be 
high also the pressure will be very based on the applied pressure in addition to that we have i want to mention one more thing here uh, now when you model the soil you have to keep in mind that there won't be tensile stresses develop in the soil so that you have to consider now in certain cases when you model the foundation sometimes foundation may be lifted due to the behavior of this foundation okay that's not because of the soil or because of the loading and in and any anything like that so in such situations you have to keep in mind to release the soil spring constant or you should not let the soil to consider tensile forces because when foundation lifted soil can't soil can't act as a tensile spring okay soil won't do it because when foundation lifted from soil soil is will be detached from the foundations only when the soil is compressed by the foundation then and only the pressures will be balanced and pressure will be handled by springs okay therefore we have to keep in mind to consider with the model soil compression only option you have to consider you shall not consider the tension behavior for the soil when you model the foundations there may be special situations you need to consider those kind of situation that you have to be very carefully applied when it is there to be applied other than that when you do the modeling of the foundations you shall only use the compression spring or some compression k sub the reaction that we calculated here so this you have to keep in mind this additional information that i shared with you so with that let's end the today discussion today this we discuss about the sub the reaction and how it is applied when you do the modeling of the foundation and also we discuss the method of calculating the sub the reaction based on the settlement of the foundation right with that let's conclude today video Let's meet again from new video. Thank you very much for watching our videos.